Right, final episode, finally. Um, I wasn't going to film a few bits that I'm going to film now, but I thought it gives me a chance to kind of speak and explain to you what's coming as part of the video, um, further down in the video. So we're going to do the glass. The glass has already been pre, um, pre-cleaned and pre-IPA'd, so we used 100% neat alcohol just to give it the best... Um, bonding experience now again there will be some remnants of this the glass plus on there but again this can be layered multiple times so again after after this video i will probably come back tomorrow and apply a secondary coat but it's now 8 p.m about 8 p.m um everyone's at home I love shooting videos when it's late. <laughs> it's as if I'm never home. But it's nice when it's quiet, no one's disturbing you. So basically, the car's officially finished. After this video, the car will be out again in the wild, i.e. on the roads. You'll probably see me about learning how to drive this thing again because I haven't driven it for such a long time. But everything's on. I'm gonna pan the camera around real quick. So I put the grill back on. Um, it's a shame. In fact, I almost tore it back off just to show you guys, but then I thought, ah, it's not authentic. But I was putting it on, I had a few issues with the clips, and I thought, oh, this would be great for the video. By the time I thought that for the clip was already in, boom, it was in. So the only thing that we need to put in is the badge I'm gonna show you. Um, seeing how the whole front end looks, I think me and Kelly have decided that that ring, so the Audi three-pointed star, it has to go uh, black. It just looks so much better. So yes, the ring is going black. After, I didn't think it would look as good, but after having the actual grill put back in, it has to go black. There's just, you can't have that silver. It's just too much chrome then again. And we're going for a, a blacked out look anyway so i'll show you in a second but after this technically i've wiped the wheels down i'm going to put a new product on which i'm about to talk to you about um so the wheels the glass and then we're going to apply a coat of this new it's a development so it's not coming out anytime soon but it's moved to the stages um, as I say, the crap stages onto the good stages. And what I mean by that is we have a few uh, demo cars that kind of get really hammered. Some of them are ours, some of them are not ours. And the whole purpose of this is, is to replicate a daily driver. Now, again, obviously we do have daily drivers, but we look after them really well. But there are some of our daily drivers which we want to treat as if the worst customer would ever treat them. So we wash them super quick, one bucket method. The whole thing is to try and replicate the worst experience the pen will ever do. So it's moved from that stage where it's shown really, really nice um, results. And now it's gonna move on to the good stage, which is gonna be onto the main display car and the main test car, which is this, cause it's black. So if anything is ever gonna go wrong, it's on a black car. If it's ever gonna double ghost or anything like that, we know it's gonna happen here. And that's the thing as well, when you are working on a light colored car and you've got what's called the double ghosting effect, and that's obviously like some, some sort of solvent pop happening um, whether that's not cured properly i mean some some products actually operate like this where where you literally have to give them a wash right after um, the waxing process not right after but say on your next maintenance wash but it's it, it has to be kind of tested on on a dark color vehicle, it'd be absolutely pointless saying, let's try this on a white car, everything looks hunky-dory. 
you put it on any other color spectrum, boom, you've got issues. So it's a vote of confidence um, that we're putting it on a car like this. I'm gonna talk you through, because some, some panels on this have been um, treated with other development stuff. So again, this is like the Mustang, this is going back to a tapestry of paintwork. I, um, I contacted a friend of mine who's got one of them, is it a PDR, PDI inspection sheets of this car? Um, but with no numbers, it's literally just a plain picture, like an outline of this car. And I've got like 200 of them. <laughs> this is really sad, but it's really effective. So this is how I've kind of looked at exactly what products were. But the majority of the car is going to be treated in this new product. Now, what is this new product? It's, it's actually interesting I'm talking about this now. It's the same raw polymer that is in the Glass Plus. Now, if you remember to the Glass Plus developments and the Glass Plus actual, you know, when I was talking about it, I said, we have found, I've got to be very careful what I say here. <laughs> we found um, a specific raw material that can be cross-platformed cross across many different types of product. So when you're talking a glass product and a paint product, I mean, have you ever seen a product that is dedicated, may I say, just as well, that is dedicated to glass and then also dedicated to paint specifically? Yes, you can put a quick detail on glass, but again, it's, it's a kind of whole different category that we're talking about. But it's the same polymer um, that is in all those products. And I said to you, one day we are going to make cross-platforming attempts whether it be a ceramic shampoo, ceramic spray wax, etc., etc., ceramic detailer, it could be a ceramic, oh God, there's plenty of ways to implement an actual raw ceramic technology into a product. There could be many products. In fact, you could do a ceramic interior kind of dressing, which kind of adds a bit more durability, but then you know what I feel about interior dressings. So yeah. Um, and you've also got to be careful because, like I say to people who are trust, who, I mean, who've popped here or speak to me on the phone and correct me if I'm wrong, please, because um, I think I am right on this one, but it's the same thing with the pricing and that five litre pricing video is coming. Um, I'm not sure exactly how to word it properly without causing real friction within the industry, but it needs to be said what's on my mind but with what I'm about to say my honest opinion is that in the past now you can I'm not going to mention names but you'll probably know who I'm talking about and it's multiples of brands here in the past again you know let's make no illusion we haven't been around for a hundred years but um, I've got this weird vision that again will play out eventually to time over time but these brands in the past, imagine starting from like the first brand ever in the world, moving upwards. These brands have used um, the term ceramic. Now, so some of these brands have got actually cracking products um, with actual ceramic infusion within those products. But then as technology started moving on, as you know, you know, certain ceramic products are harder to work with than others. But as technology started moving on, and this is where what you see all the time of people saying they're jumping on it in the forums or the names, is certain companies have come along and said, I've got a ceramic, for example, detailer or ceramic spray wax. And if you were to look at it under a microscope, just how much ceramic is there? Because there is a baseline where people like, imagine 1%, if you've got more, anything over 1%, Obviously, that's not a true number, but if you've got over 1%, you can dedicate to pro or class your product as ceramic. So these companies are coming in and basically saying, right, I've got a ceramic spray wax. Boom. There you guys go. And what's happened over time, this is the point I'm trying to get to, over time, these people, as in customers, have 
looked at these companies and some of these companies have got large advertising budgets or small, but literally it's the customers where they were the guinea pigs and some of these products with let's say 1% ceramic in them clearly haven't performed. And don't forget, ceramic products perform in one of three ways or four ways, it depends how you look at it. You've obviously got that crazy durability that you know happens with something like ceramics. You've got the crazy gloss, which again ceramics cause on a well prepped car, well maintained car, however you want to look at it. You've got the extreme water behavior and you've got the slickness. There might be one or two more, but those are the main ones. Now, when a marketing term, and then when you've got the big boys coming in saying, oh, I've got ceramics and all this, obviously it comes into the ether of the, the general public and you've got your Halfords in, in America, your Walmart selling, you know, ceramic infused bloody um, toilet paper. So people, I think the industry was ruined with the word ceramic. Now, the problem is, since that point, I mean, obviously it's still happening now, since that point, new brands have come along, like us, who have got the money for the development and other brands. There are brands which are within our kind of birthday, year older, year newer, or a couple of years old, a couple of years newer, that are coming in who have got a bit of funds to play with to actually make a real ceramic product. And then those products come into the forum and immediately, instantly, people say, it's junk, it's crap, it doesn't work, or I'm gonna stick to this, I'm gonna, you know, there's, hundred things that people say and this is the problem when I say industry sometimes gets ruined and I think the same thing is going to happen with graphene so you can see the craze that graphene's coming out now you've got companies coming out calling it pure graphene and graphite now and oh, it's, it, it's ridiculous the, 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 the technology is too early on to be implemented I personally believe to be marketed the way some companies are marketing it. Now, again, you know if you follow that timeline, so you've got first few companies now, the same as 100 years ago, they um, started the ceramic trend, now it's the, the graphene trend. 10, 20 years down the line, honestly, if you ever just remember what I say in your head, you're gonna get these low, like, low life companies coming in who just want a book. They're gonna, again, call it, say, 1%. That's the, the baseline, 1% graphene, and you're going to get flooded with graphene shampoos. And I mean, there's already a graphene tie dress and a graphene shampoo. Next, there's going to be a graphene microfiber towel. Um, and then again, 30 years down the line, another company will come along and do a, a, one hell of a formula of graphene, where again, 30 years of knowledge behind them, or I mean, not knowledge, but 30 years of previous company's experiences, and they'll make one hell of a product. And then something else will come along, diamonds, whatever. So the whole tangent that I've just went on was, I've got to be careful what I say about ceramics because we've actually poured some serious blood, sweat and tears, and of course money, because that's what's needed in this industry, um, into, into, even now it's, the product's not released, into attempting to release a product that has got actual, way above the market value of ceramics within the product. Tell me if you agree or not, because I reckon I've just made a very good point. Um, so yeah. A lot of people saying, and, and this is what I think is a bit unfair, you've got these little YouTube influencers who um, aren't chemists, right? And they just don't know what to talk about and they just jump, and they, wrong, they regurgitate the information that they've been reading on a forum 
saying, you know, so there'll be like a guy who just writes all the time, people listen to him, then they'll read it and then just regurgitate it on their platform, imagine 30K, 20K, a million, and then you could see where this spreads, a million people hear it and they regurgitate it to their friends and the cycle continues. But I think some companies haven't jumped on the word of ceramic. Obviously ceramic is here to stay. It's never going to get pushed. It's like wax. People say wax is dead, wax will always die. It, it, there'll always be a market for wax. Um, is it as effective as, you know, a good polymer sealant? The polymer being the ceramic, of course. But of course not. It's, you know, but wax has its own beauty. You know, a ceramic will never create the warmth. A few have come close, but still, that natural glow from the canuba, the montan waxes, beeswax, paraffin wax, I can keep going about the waxes. And yeah, don't listen to everything you hear. Now this video is gonna get shared to the wrong people, like it always does. It's the same, it's the same four or five people who dislike a video before it goes live. <laughs> I love it. Um, so, I think I'm right. I honestly think the industry has been, I use the word lightly, obviously ruined, obviously the industry is not ruined, but it's like the detailers, kind of people think a forum is the end all and be all, and everything that gets written there is like God's truth, let's say. And there's like four people on there who pretend to know something and they actually don't. So, but in that case, yeah, everyone's jumped on a ceramic bandwagon. Um, it's, it's not correct. It's like, I'll, I'll tell you a really good story here. By the way, real quick, I've just looked at the, at the reflection on the camera. Just look at the glass. It just, yeah, I'll tell you a quick story. Jumping on the bandwagon would be this. Um, we, we explored uh, a, a ceramic shampoo, okay? So we wanted to do this whole sub range of just pure ceramic infused products where if you've got say any sort of ceramic coating on your car, cause a lot of people are starting to get coatings now, they, they can maintain it. You can have ceramic waxes, all that sort of stuff. So we, ceramic shampoo. So we went away and we thought, right. And I, I kid you not, if you know me, you know this is the truth that's coming out of my mouth. When I develop a product, I say, look, the best. So I try and go for the most expensive raw materials for just everything. I just, in fact, it's quite easy to work with me when I say, I just want the best, right? And it's like ceramic polymers. You could be buying a kilo worth for 50 quid and a kilo worth for five grand. 10 grand, you know, it's, people look at it and say it's ceramic, but it's not. Or oh, it's not the same value, the same raw material content, the same strength. So anyway, we went and explored a ceramic shampoo and I said, literally, look, you've got to make me something that absolutely blows people's minds. Right? And this shampoo came in and when I saw the cost per liter, I thought, holy mother of God, like literally it was extortionate. I can't even tell you. Like, I, look, I just, I've never seen anything like it. It was like 17 times the cost of our most expensive product. And I thought, really? Like, you know, it doesn't make sense. Now, I thought, right, I'm gonna have to try this. So anyway, we made some up and tried it um, on one of our test cars. And you know what? I wasn't impressed. Like the best to me wasn't impressive. Like, again, I'm going to, I'm, I'm not going to go any further into why it wasn't because um, I remember that day it was cold. It was, yeah, it was just a weird day to be testing it on. And I kind of, I didn't really do my usual Nick standard. That's a dead pad. A 
luckily I know a guy who has many of these. Um, so, <laughs> as I was saying, it wasn't the usual Nick standard of testing. I just, really, I was just excited. I wanted to test it. I just wanted to see what the fuss was about, really. So, I um, wasn't really that impressed. So, if you know the fact about ceramic shampoos, you'll know that they usually don't foam very well. In fact, this, because again, the raw content was so strong, there was no foam, like zero. You would, you can turn your pressure on really low, kind of PSI and really like spend 10 minutes roughing it up. 20 seconds later, the foam would settle back down into just the clear water. So, yeah, I wasn't that fussed. Now, jumping on a bandwagon would be me, for example, saying, ah, you know, beads, wow, yeah, great. Um, beading, obviously, has its benefits and has its drawbacks, as everybody knows. So, jumping on a bandwagon would be saying, yeah, come on, let's go, let's manufacture it and, let, and let's start pumping product out like there's no tomorrow. Like some companies have got 17 different car shampoos, same formula, just a different scent, wow. So it's, and by the way, this whole jumping on, like nobody said anything to me, so I'm not like having a rant on camera. I'm just kind of explaining, because ceramics, I do read, you know, I, I'm very rarely on Facebook, on my personal page, obviously because I'm just too busy. Um, living my best life, as they say. So, but when I do, and I read some of these comments on the forums, and I just think, look, dude, you don't know what you're talking about. Um, it's even funny when people argue about five different brands and say, mine is better than yours, and I'm thinking, it's the same manufacturer. But yeah, I do read sometimes, and I just think, ah. But you're gonna see this product. I showed it a sneak peek, by the way, new towels. I'm go I've showed you a sneak peek in my, if you remember, can you remember the December draw clear out? Where I thought it was going to be a 30 minute video. It turned out to be into two episodes total, about four hours, that episode. <laughs> so I, I did a sneak peek, if you remember, and I told you it's a special formula. I showed you the shakeability of it. And you can tell it's not like a product like you've seen on the market yet. So yeah, it's... It's a cool product and literally it is, if you were to say, well, what, what category does it come into? Is it a spray detailer? Uh, like, I'm sorry, a spray wax, ceramic detailer. What is it? A spray sealant. Now it's, it's a hybrid. It's, it's a hybrid formula, but its main category or its main purpose is a topper which is very important. Now you've got the detail spray. Our detail spray, literally, we cannot make it quick enough. Um, it is very special, right? It offers no protection. I'm always transparent about that because a lot of people seem to think detail sprays need to offer stuff. I, I disagree. Now, this is gonna be a topper, whether you've got obviously all the way to the top, the big boy level, you've got your coatings, you know, your eight year packages, your normal coatings, ceramic spray sealants, spray sealants, waxes, whatever that you use, it can be topped with our product. So it's going to be an interesting one. And the main thing, in fact, I, I used this on this car and it was on the windscreen. So basically what happened was I pretty much took this car home, if you remember the pickup video last year, and I took it home came back in it and I thought, I'm gonna give it, you know, I wanted to, so excited, love this car. Um, and I thought, I'm gonna wash it. So the paint works all jacked up and yeah, it just wasn't in a good state. It needed claying, detarring, basically the whole paint needed burning. So on the windscreen, it was rough. Oh, I'm gonna use a good phrase I caught. The windscreen was rougher than a night in jail. I stole that from somebody, by the way, before you think I invented a, a, a cool joke. But yeah, the glass was rough as hell. And I thought, I'm gonna try this product. So I dried the car and I used it as a drying aid on the windscreen only, 50-50. Driver side was plain um, and passenger side was coated in this product. Oh, I, honestly, when you break that surface tension, like I always say with the detail spray, when you break that surface tension and you start massaging it in, 
it was just, oh, it was beautiful. I almost used a different word there. Uh, so yeah, I've, I've played with this product a while now and I love it. It's been in development for a long time, but then again, that doesn't really matter because people sometimes just don't care how long something's been in development for. But yeah, it's always a proud achievement for us that we do kind of work the product as long as we can and break it to as many different possibilities as we can. But I tried it on the windscreen, guys, I'm telling you, it was, it's a dangerous product. It's really cool. It's gonna shock a lot of people. Yes, it adds a little bit of protection. This is why it's now a great topper for you, like anything, like you've got a base product. So for example, you could use like a Yum Ceramic base and this product as a topper. So this will not replace the detail spray. This will complement the detail spray. Because again, like I said to you, if you go to a car show, you want to use a detailer or some waterless kind of style product with zero capability of adding protection because well, I'll give you an example. Imagine this is paintwork and this is a protective product. And look, I'm wiping and wiping and wiping just to, you know, kind of break the tension and remove the residue. You do that on a dirty car, you're stuffed pretty much. Especially on a black car, you're going to get swirls everywhere. So the detail spray is still going to be here, obviously, because it's one hell of a selling product. Um, people who've used, who've used the pros all the way down to like the most clueless person um, who's never washed a car before have all agreed that it's a great product. Um, this will complement it. So you would have like a detail spray, you would have this new product, Hume Ceramic. Again, wax is not being replaced either, but this is just another addition to the protective line where it's just the main, the main accuracy of this product is the slickness. Again, the darkening effect of the paint. And what I mean by that, it's not like it changes your white car to gray. It just adds depth, that's it. The, the depthening effect of a color. But again, on some cars, it just adds some serious kind of darkness. And you can almost jump in and swim um, in the glass. So, super excited. So the glass is done. I'm just gonna do, do, do. Have, I, have I done everything yet? I'm gonna take the new product out and I'm gonna show you. Now, the most important factor in this test that we're going to do is something that you'll be shocked at here is the fact that this car currently has got naked paint. Okay, so it's been pure alcohol wiped and then followed up with an IPA because it's pure alcohol sometimes if you work it too far on the panels has a tendency to streak a bit or if you put too much on, which in my case I did. So this is a product in question. Now, when you shake it up, just look at the foam stability within this product, which already kind of shows you that this is not your usual formulation or yeah, that's not been seen before in product. So I'm super, super excited. Um, as I said, it's naked paint. So people be going, losing their minds, turning YouTube off right now, going, I'm not watching this guy no more. Um, how dare he put something like a non-permanent thing on a car like this now, it's been you know, leveled pretty much. Why don't you go and coat it in your super duper, you know, 40 year ceramics? I could, but I love playing with products. I love, you know, stripping the car chemically. And then sometimes obviously mechanically, if, if I need to, and then test new products and seeing, cause at the end of the day, if I was to coat this now in, you know, a really good ceramic five years is about industry standard at the minute, five years, and I was going to put this on. I'll never tell realistically. Yes. This product would inhibit the ceramic properties, but still the ceramic properties will be shown through. So if something were to go wrong with this product, I'll never tell because something's on the base level. So you only live once. So let's, let's do it. So the trigger's primed. I'm going to do one spray. I've done probably a spray and a half into this towel as well. So It'd be really interesting to actually see it on black. Um, right. See, I didn't put a lot on, 
which is nice. So, oh yes, it's just what I thought. Very nice. Now it leaves a, a film, which is actually very nice to see on black. It's almost like a haze, as if it's a wax. And that way you can almost methodically go and, and buff it off. But if you watch me closely, I'm not buffing an area more than once, so it's not super hard to use. Now, if, if we were to then go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, right? Why not? So, ten sprays. Yeah, and it's a lot thicker. Now let's see how it wipes off. Now again, I've used this before, so I know exactly what happens next. But I'm curious what now, this is the first time I've used it on a black car. Uh, and they look easy. I'm gonna bring the camera in after this and I'm gonna show you what I mean by the haze. It's it's a very strange, in a good way, obviously. It's a very strange kind of product. Now again, it will offer crazy hydrophobics. It's non-permanent, so please do not expect this to be, you know, oh, it's gone off you four months, because realistically, who puts a product on a car for four months? Bar ceramics, and even with ceramics, people are topping it all the time. Um, and, and I'm talking about resin delivered ceramic here. Um, whoever puts a product on for four to six months, for example, and just leaves it, you don't. Even when you're drying, 100% I always recommend, even if you've gone and waxed it with something else, go and use a topper. That's, that's what you should be doing. But the main thing is, it feels baby smooth. It feels protected smooth, which is obviously you've got the panel that's unprotected. And then you've got the protector panel. Nice. Now I'm going to try and capture this the best I can. So look, put it on. Let's see if the camera picks up this haze. Are you guys seeing this? So obviously if you see, yeah, you can see kind of the streaks. Now you take a towel, and once I'm going to wipe half of it, and you can kind of see around here exactly where I haven't wiped it. Obviously, I'm going to take my dry towel now and just look. You're doing a one pass buff like this, you're just leveling it off. Done. Beautiful. So, this will actually add, I know this is very hard to tell through camera but this will add a very nice um, darkening effect. And what I like to do with these products is I like to pretty much not stand back and look at the car. I'm going to kind of do the whole thing now and assess it afterwards. So the car done, just have a look at that gloss. Let me have a look at that screen. Oh. Beautiful. Um, it's literally reflecting now, the light straight back into your eyes. It's dripping with gloss. It's amazing. I'm in love. That's it. Game over. Um, so, as I said to you, it's a shame that I didn't put this in because I was upside down. I was looking where the clips go. Now, can you see? It just looks so much tidier. I was going to buy one of these black where it says AMG. I thought I'm going to leave it because the badges that I bought for this are all completely wrong. Nobody does a black badge in this style pin that goes in, so I'm going to keep it silver. Now, we initially thought with Kelly, there's my two grommets which I need, that the silver is going to look good. Now you let me know. Personally now, I think that has to go black. So, before I move into the tyres, I'm going to try and put those back in somehow um, i can't even remember how i took it off so i know it's a twist now, if i break this i will die here we go i am filming this 
whatever happens, happens. So the star has to go like this. It's, it's a twist fitment. Twisted it left to bring it out. Oh dear, I can hear cracking noises already. Jesus wept. Um, but it'll have to get taken off eventually anyway. Now, there'll be some Mercedes guru watching this video, holding his head crying. But trust me, I will figure this out. And this is my car, so I'm not gonna break it. All right, so that clips in like this. Now, way, we're in business. See, that ain't coming off, perfect. So, let me wipe this down quick. with my super special product. Give this some protection. Just get all my finger marks off, but yeah. Let me know um, by which point, I think by the time this video goes live, I think I would have ordered it because tonight's what, Thursday. Um, taking this car out Sunday, so yeah. I'm most likely going to order it today or tonight. Um, it won't get dispatched until tomorrow, weekend probably. I've, obviously, I'm going to get it early next week. Uh, but it's actually quite easy. Again, this car's been in here that long that <laughs> I forgot how to take it on and off. But yeah, you twist it left, comes off, twist it right to put it back in protected now i'm gonna um almost wrap the video up so i've already coated the wheels in this new product and what i'm quickly going to show you i did say on my previous video that i might show you a development of the tire stuff that we're working on um but again it's kind of um i decided not to but what i'm going to show you it's his properties so i'm not going to show you the product or anything like that i'm just going to show you just a simple application of it currently this is again we're working on something special again we're working on um, a moisturizer. Hume Dress currently has moisturizing capability. However, with this one, it's gonna be a whole different, so we've U-turned, we've U-turned on a formula and we're gonna make something completely kind of new. It's cool. And it's basically a moisturizer. Now, I've, I've looked at different brands. There's a brand in Switzerland who does this and, uh, and they do it like a rubber feeder. So I, I noticed a few people using like a rubber feeder. So I kind of bought some, it was extortionately priced. I tried it on a different car and it was really nice. Like the, the bottle price kind of reflected the quality which I, I expected from this brand. So I, st I started thinking how can we cross platform a specific, you know, like a rubber feeder within your door jams is a very niche product. How can we do it across your trims, your tires? How can we make it look, you know, satin? If you want to add gloss, add more layers. Um, again, I'm not su super fan of adding double, triple layers of a product. I think the product should be made for like a one layer coating. But then again, it's, it depends. But with this, because this product doesn't sit on top of a tire, this actually goes into the tire. So this is a, a tire and rubber and trim moisturizer and the way we've made it you can cross platform it across many different ways and in this case we're going to be using it as a spray application which has never been done before with a type of product like this so it's a spray application and it just oh it's beautiful so I've, I've actually done the interior detail off camera we actually diluted this specific product five to one Right, so we did it five to one and it was very loose. Uh, and basically I thought, oh, it's not gonna work. So again, I'm testing it. Nobody knows what the range of this product is. It's, is, is it even dilutable? So I thought there's only one, one way to find out. Put some product in, dilute it with water. So all the trims, so the, the kick panels, cause this car, you actually, you, you, you come into a car, you, you sit and then you drop. So actually um, 
when, when you're sat here, you've got probably up to here and it's kind of like you're in a cave almost. So, but the kick panel of it's plastic. So I, I coated that, I, I did the door rubbers, obviously, and anything plastic and rubber in the boot is a nice plastic bit of like, of, of design. Now I did 50-50, let's have a look first, it looks amazing. And, but instantly within about 20 seconds, 30 seconds, I came back to it and I felt it and it was unbelievable. So I'm gonna show you now on the tires. The tires, obviously I did episode one, how to clean your tires and stuff. But in this case, I also did a couple of weeks ago in preparation for this video, I did undress on a, on a microfiber towel and then hit it three times. I know this is not healthy for the tire, but I hit it three times with pure neat alcohol, which just really dried the tire out. There's literally nothing on it. So come on, let me come show you this. So um, with this product, the tire is literally really dry. It's got, it's, it's got nothing on it and the reason why we're already starting to work on this is because on a car, you've got many different services. You've got your rubbers, you've got your trims, but even your rubbers are not all the same. So, so your tie rubber to your door jam rubber is completely different. And your plastics are also different now. In fact, the fact that I've just been talking about this has just reminded me that, can you remember episode two or three when I did the engine bay? Now, I almost forgot, I can't believe it. I'm gonna lift after this, I'm gonna lift the engine bay up and I'm gonna show you how it looks that hasn't been touched by me apart from that initial spray application onto being left for months and what it looks like now. So with this tire, um, what we're gonna do is I just like to literally put it in Now this product will feed the rubber, which is the most important thing. If the camera's picking this up, I may, I may have to go in for a closer look. Now I only did one spray into this. So over, over time, you're actually feeding the tire exactly the nutrients that it needs. And if I can get it, to where it is dilutable properly. Um, because again, I've been using it. Can you remember the Mustang video? People saying, what's this product? What's this product? Um, God, that was, was it last year? I mean, seriously, it was early last year. Again, this is with a new applicator pad. So putting one spray in isn't the best as you need to pre-saturate them. But just look at that. It looks sick. It's very nice. And the most important thing, so my hands are dry. Oh, it just, it's got that baby. It, it's as if you've put like a, a detail spray on the tire. It's so slick. It's very nice. There's no residue anywhere. And what this does is if you keep layering it over and over, so week after week after week, um, this will, first of all, have a almost like a semi-permanent look if you look after it properly. Um, obviously, it's not a semi-permanent product, but it depends how you look after your tire. Now, if your tire was prepped properly at the start and you start laying it as it is, the actual look of this is slightly darker because this is a new pad. As you've seen the, with the Yum Dress video, I suggest you put a ton on, let the sponge actually absorb the product and then you can work it in. I just pull one spray in, but it's just made an absolute beautiful result. I'm gonna see if I can take you in closer. And what I mean about that is you've got the gap. Can you see where you've got the, the dressing gap almost? You can see it where the line is. Look at it, it looks slick. Again, don't forget, I've just put this on. Now I can't believe, I almost forgot to actually show you this. It's unbelievable. 
Now bear in mind that this product was sprayed on wet after we did the engine bay detail. The bonnet was shut and it literally just haven't been under here. Obviously I've looked at it because I know what the results are like, but there's, there's no trickery. I mean, look, there's even dust on the engine bay. I'm gonna take you in closer, but just when you look at the engine cover of this, it's, by the way, it's a beautiful machine, isn't it? It's built by Ernesto. He's a good man, Ernesto. Um, he built a hell of a car. So I just wanted to show you from a distance, first of all, what this looks like. Sprayed, left, literally, there is, I, in fact, I'm a little bit surprised. There's a, no, that's not just a light. I'm surprised there's no high spots because certain other products, if you overlay them, like, like if you do too much wetness or application when it's wet and it starts to run and pool, there's a bit of a high spot. But this is where you would come in, done. But there's no high spot. I'm going to take you in, but just look, it's just amazing. And if there was a high spot, you would take the product, which you've diluted. So again, imagine something like five to one. You take it with like a wheel towel, do one spray and go over it and you'll be done. But just look at it. It's truly amazing. See, there's a bit of dust there. Looks amazing. Again, all the plastic bits. This has not been wiped by me. There's no high spots again, a bit of dust. <sighs> and the beauty of it applying wet, in fact, you could tell how long the car, the car's been sat for because it's starting to get dusty. So I haven't wiped this down. It's actually a good proven point. But look at that. And that's what you get. So this is not a brand new car. Plastic was battered and it's amazing. So guys, uh, wrap up time. I'm just, I'm shattered. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's been, we're so busy. But anyway, with this car, that's why it took us so long because we're so busy. I'm so happy that it's finally done. So I'm going to redress, uh, well, not redress, I'm going to dress the other three tires that you've seen me already do with the new product. Um, if you are here, so you do come in into uh, the HQ and you watch these videos, obviously, just have a look at the tires. It's just beautiful. Just have a look at the paint. It's amazing. And I'm just so excited to be working on something that is. It's so hard to crack. This is the thing I love. I don't like the final result. The final result's easy. It's, it's, it's the chase of something that is almost unattainable. This is why I don't really want to show you what it looks like, what it smells like. I see, have you noticed with those two products, I haven't touched on smells, colors. Um, obviously the paint product, I showed you a little bit of the wipeability, but we're still tweaking it. It's still probably, we need to make it a little bit easier to use, if I'm honest. Even though it's already a doddle, but I'm thinking for the stupidest person again. Uh, and with this product, I don't want to show you a single thing. Even the membership platform may not even get this. The might, actually. But this is when we start getting to the V2s, V3s, and we start actually tweaking the... Um, the sustainability of the product, the viability, can, is there any kind of, again, we do a lot of volatility testing. Some of these products are not made for car care applications. So to put something like that on a car, who the hell knows what's gonna happen. So this is why it always gets done on our cars first. If we do burn a hole in a paint, great, it's our cars. But from what you've seen, one on the tire, again, the tire probably wasn't the best example because I needed to hit it a couple more times with, because it, it was a new applicator block, a few more sprays, but with this, I mean, it's unreal. Now, it's been on one of our cars in terms of the dressing or the moisturizer. I'm gonna start calling it moisturizer when I speak about it. 
it's been on a, I'm, the durability is not bad either so when you're talking water-based when you're talking not even addressing more of a paint feed uh, tire feeder moisturizer you're not expecting it to be the best durability wise we've driven through rain again rain impact all dressings if i'm honest snow impacts at all but in the dry we got about nine days 10 days now this car was washed on day 14 now day 14 you could still see it but you could tell it was due a wash but, but just the engine bay i'm so pleased with it it just comes on goes off easy in fact what i'm going to do off camera now once i conclude the episode i'm going to take the neat bottle so the stuff that i haven't diluted i'm going to spray it onto a towel and i'm going to just give it another wipe over maybe add a bit more kind of sheen to it just so it's i don't know i just like layering this product it's really nice but anyway guys i tried to bring you in a little bit to what we do on the membership platform so by the way we've had a lot more members join recently and the last month we've had a ton of them join so thank you so much somebody must be talking somewhere so yeah i hope you're enjoying it but this is like a one percent of what we do in the membership paint looks great guys the the badge is going to get changed around in the next couple of days and yeah it's going to be oh how can i forget come on i need to put i left i'm so upset about putting this on off camera i'm going to put the rear badge um on for you so come on let's have a go <laughs> so i peeled it off the 3m tape and i thought no i'm not gonna put this on i need to bring you into the whole journey guys come on you know how i play um so this is the gloss black badge it's got the three pins but also it's got the 3m tape around the core uh, around the edges <laughs> I need Kelly for this, honestly. I, I need a female touch in this situation because I'll end up snapping the pins. <laughs> so the gloss black touch. Probably do all right in. Oh dear. It's one of them, you have, it's almost like one of them games, you have to put them in corner at a time. At least you know it won't come out again, Jesus. Yeah, you don't want to put the tape down first. I've just decided I'm going to push it in. What happens, what happens? At least it's straight because of the holes. You can't get it wrong. Make sure. I feel like I'm going to snap this stupid badge. Now, we've gone all black. So I've got a non-handheld version of my camera. Handheld, so this could be quite dangerous. I just wanted to leave you now, guys, on this happy note. Thank you so much for watching the support with everything orders just coming in here being the best people you can be appreciate it um come down have a look at the car if you want when it's here uh, i look forward to seeing you all very soon so this video is going to drop friday i look forward to seeing you all saturday as always we're very busy here the wheel of fortune is always out on saturday so if you want to win some free stuff shops looking sweet and um, we've got some new stuff there as well so yeah, hope you guys have a great weekend, high five, and thank you for bearing, this is a long video to wrap up, but yeah, for bearing with me, hope you're excited as I am on some of the new products, and now that the AMG GTS is out, couldn't say the word properly, now that it's out, um, you've got some cool content coming, I'm going to really mix it up, we've got some reviews, stuff like that, and we'll see what happens. Anyway guys, hope you guys have a good day thank you for watching and catch you next week cheers